So obviously I'm carrying a lot of uh, strength and power from all my years training for World Strongest Man competitions. It, uh, it's, it's helped me a lot as far as just for a good, good work, work ethic, a good base of strength. And I don't have to work too much on, on, the, on being powerful. I can spend more time working on my endurance because the power is there already, you know. As, as with most fights, I've pictured several different ways the fight can go and, and how it can end in my favour and also covered the areas where it could, could not go in my favour. Uh, I see the fight getting off to a very fast, fast start and I see the fight being more in my favour as it goes on. So that will obviously lean towards my opponent wanting to try and get the job done as fast as possible as well, which can make, make for an explosive opening round. I always uh, prefer standing up because uh, that's what the people like, they want to see a brawl, they want to see knockouts. So uh, I always prefer standing up, but if it goes to the ground it's also fine for me. I would choke you or I'll break your arm, it's no problem for me. Uh, I never heard of Ali Thompson, just uh, when I had to fight him. In my opinion he's a wrestler, he likes to go to the ground every fight. Uh, I, think, I don't think he likes to stand up because he uh, hasn't got a chin and uh, this fight I will drop him in the first or second round. So here we are at Bama 15 and the first time for MMA in the Olympic Park. And we have Zim Salmani, 19 years of age. Look at the size of this young man. The Albanian psycho, three wins, one loss on his record. And Frank, you were just saying to me, 19 years of age, he's a monster. And I didn't realize he was 19. You know, like I said, I've known the, Gori, the Golden Glory guys for a long time. I used to train and spend a lot of time with them in, in Japan when I used to work for Pride. And I know how his trainers work, I know how they work with these guys. And they're saying, when Martin De Jong is telling me, this is the guy, like, this is the guy we're bringing up. I thought he was in his mid, mid to late 20s. This guy's 19 years old and already already got the grasp of the Golden Glory team. Like, they're paying attention to him, they're to help him out, they're securing his future in mixed martial arts. He looks a little pudgy when he weighs in, but he's a huge, huge kid. Extremely well, he also says, though, Frank, that he loves to stand. You heard that, and bang. Yet two of his three wins are by sub. He's a very quirky guy. He tries to tell you he's a stand-up guy. That's all he knows, that's all he does. It's like he almost secretly works at the grappling game, but doesn't want anybody to know that's what he's doing. He got a great submission. It's not outstanding. It's not, you know, but for a guy that's four and one, or excuse me, three and one, he's got an amazingly good grappling game for someone so young as MMA career. And knows how to use it well, especially at this size. At this age, though, we've got to admit there's an incredible atmosphere here tonight. How will that affect him, 19 years of age? That, for me, at 19 years of age, my whole goal is trying to make the Olympics. Like, try to compete in this during Olympic Games, like, like the, you know, the, the Kyle Box is built for the Olympic Games here in London. Like, that was all I was trying to do, so I would think he's prepped and prepared already, especially being on, on a team as, as tough as Golden Glory, that he already knows how good this is going to be. So, Zim Salmani is in the cage, and what a big lad at 19 years of age. the cheers here for his opponent it's the Spartan Oli Thompson 34 years of age 12 wins five losses six wins by KO five wins by sub very well-rounded fighter indeed tall strong extremely strong and very articulate in his in his VT that we saw behind yeah, beforehand yeah, very how he envisages the fights man he thinks his way through it. The, his claim to fame, obviously, is being, a, being the British strongman. The old strongman contest that, you know, he did very well in them, but the problem is, I think, he, he believes that that strength and that power will translate into mixed martial arts. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Doing farmer's walks and doing those kind of things, we train like that to get ready for a fight, but that's not what we do wholly. He did it wholly. I believe, I think he believes that that power and that strength is going to transfer. Against a guy like Kazim, it's not going to transfer. Well, the thing is, we, we look at big, powerful fighters. To be fair to Ollie, on the domestic level, he's beaten Mark Potter, he's beaten Ben Smith, big, strong guys. So it's not like he won't be used to that level of power. 
you know, he understands the power. And the biggest thing that Kazim is, is worrying about later in it's going to the second round, is he still going to have that kind of power? Or is he going to be able to back him off and slow him down? We, we're talking about Ali. He's hoping that that power and that strength is going to weather the storm that, that Kazim's going to give him the first couple minutes of the first round, that he'll be able to weather that storm and then use his strength and power to counteract it. I'm glad you mentioned that because he really had to measure the storm against Ben Smith. He really had to weather that. He was almost rocked and almost out of there. And then he ends up coming back with, the, with big hands and big... The thing is that both these guys have tremendous power. Amazing power. And remember, they're only wearing five and a half, five and a half ounce gloves on their hands, which is at, at the heavyweight boxing size, same size as the guys are, they're wearing, they're wearing eight ounce gloves at the smallest, usually 10 ounce gloves. So you're talking about half, that, half the smallest size, this is what they're wearing to hit each other with. If you touch a guy with a small clipper, you're gonna put him down. So either one of these guys can win by knockout very easily. So Oli is in the cage, and let's look at the tail of the tape. Oli Thompson, obviously 34 to the 19-year-old Albanian, but at six foot one, he's still the shorter man. You can see the two records: three one and zero versus twelve five and zero. Vastly more experienced, but these are heavyweights, and do you know what? Anything can happen in this fight. So let's go to Mike Markham, our MC, for the official announcement. From Olympic Park in London, England, we are live and worldwide. We are set for the Bama 15 main event of the evening, presented by Lonsdale. This bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bama heavyweight division. Introducing first, the man standing to my left and fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet three inches tall and weighed in at 257 and one half pounds. He is a submission grappler with a record of three victories opposite a single defeat Fighting out of Holland by way of Mitrovica, Albania. The Albanian psycho, Kizem Salmani. The opposition comes in the form of the man standing across the cage to my right and fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall. His official weight, 236 and one half ounce. He is a mixed martial artist. His professional record, 12 victories, opposite five defeats, fighting out of Eastburn, England. Ali the Spartan Thompson. Your referee, Mark Goddard. The rules you're fighting under, you list of it all times, keep yourself protected. When I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves, let's do this. Well, Frank, you know in Spartan law, you win or you go out on your shield. I think he's going to be that tonight in this big heavyweight challenge. Both these guys are coming, swinging for the fences, looking for a quick knockout. Don't blink in the first 45 seconds. So, as I said, at six foot one, he's still the shorter man. and. Salmani, true to his word, flew up the knee. The knee caught him. Oh, Flush. Jeez, put him right down. He's cranking he's out, up he's the out, guillotine. He's out. I think Mark's... you're right. I think he's gone. He's gone. You're Frank. Oh, my goodness, Frank. You said don't blink and you'll miss it. Oh, my Jeez. goodness. He was out. And this is where Mark, Mark and I disagree a little bit. Well, he's right above our position, though, Frank. Talk to me about this man. You said man. they pinned their hopes on him. That was explosive. What an incredibly strong guy. Just amazingly fast. Came in pinpoint accuracy, and he absolutely understood how to make sure that everything hits. He backed off. I thought he was going to take a half step back and go for an uppercut. And Ali stepped in tight and heavy, so he hit him with a knee up, straight up the center. Perfect position. What a great spot and completely blacked him out with that with the front show. Yeah, he right. was gone, wasn't he? He was gone yeah. a long time before Mark got in to stop it. And no and no no negativity against Mark Goddard. He did a great job of coming in. You look how tough and strong he's coming in. Confidence oh. galore. Jumps off his feet with that knee. We're talking about a man that, that's that's 260 pounds jumping up and smashing the face with that knee. What great position. At this point he's already out. Mark just doesn't know it because the movement, the way he's going, he's tightened up. When he finally checks it, it's been five or six seconds. There's no way that Mark could have known that he was out that soon. 
I'm seeing case I have a wider view because I'm seeing outside the cage. I can see it happening. There's no way that Mark could have seen that happen. He stopped at the right time at the perfect position. But also, Samani did the right thing. He didn't stop to the referee said, that's it, it's over, because didn't, we didn't see the tap because we know he's out. So Samani, he's not doing anything wrong here either, is he? No, absolutely not. Both both guys worked, worked their asses off for this fight, and Samani's the one who ends up winning the fight. And that's just how it went. Great stoppage, great time to get in there. Mark Goddard did another great job of stepping in there, doing what the ref should do. Fighter safety, incredible job. You know, by, by everyone involved inside that cage. Yeah, it's good to see now, though, that Ollie's OK. He's back on his feet there, Frank, which is always a good sign. L little dizzy trying to figure out what happened. But the bout ends at 18 seconds of the opening round. Your winner by technical submission via guillotine choke the Albanian psycho, Kizem Samani! All right, I'm standing with Ollie Thompson. Let's, uh, let's talk about that knee. That's the one that caught you at the very end. A couple of punches got through, but that's the one that stung you. It was that flying knee. Did you see it coming in at the very end, or did you, was it blind on a blind side? No, it scuffed off the top of my head like that. Yeah, it's, it's nothing there. So when we hit the ground and put you in the, in the guillotine, what happened at that point? I, I think one day I had my hand, I put my hand in and then stuck my chin down, my hand on the floor. Did, were you surprised by his power at all? Were you surprised by anything no, that he came out to you? I mean, so quick, it was only 18 no, seconds, but. I know, I'm not surprised by his power. I know, I know he's powerful, but we didn't fight enough to really be surprised or find out any more than that. So what's, what's going to happen now? You're going to go back and look at the drawing board and try to figure out what's going on? Because I mean, literally, he went out there, he hit you with a couple punches, he fell down, it was almost like a non-event, you know, the fight tonight, because the way he just got caught, blacked out, and that was it. <laughs> what happened? Exactly. Well, to be honest, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything tonight, and I'm, I'm not sore. Nothing happened to my head. I was sitting with my hand on the floor, and then, because him obviously got stopped by the referee from hitting me, and I was waiting, I was still waiting, and, not, and nothing had, had happened. And then I looked over, and the guys outside, the ring, was sort of like waving their hands at me, and I was looking over thinking, what, what's going on here? And, like, and then I was, I was, I said, they said, oh, like, it's finished. And I thought, ah, I don't know how Gazim injured himself, trying, 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 trying to, um, he looked at me on the top there, he must have fucking twisted his ankles, sorry my language, he must have twisted his ankle or something, that's not a very good win for me, but I take it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, it was, a, it was a good fight, I was, I was completely surprised by how things, how things panned out, I wanted to see it go a lot longer, because both of you guys are, are so athletic, and you're so strong, I want to see the fight go all the way into the second round, it, it, easily, just because I want to see you guys bang each other out a lot longer. Yeah, I mean, I've got about 80 people that are probably going to want their money back too. So, where's the back door? <laughs> Thanks, Al. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Ali Thompson. Thank you. Wow, that's, uh, yeah, that was impressive. I mean, really impressive, especially with someone so young, you're only 19. So, it's, where, where does that come from? Like, it wasn't just the striking that you get from Martin and Go and Glory. It wasn't just the striking and the technical ability, it was the confidence that came out with it as well. You came out, you knew from the very beginning what you're gonna do, you did it, you blasted it, and it worked. Is it always like that? Is it always that easy, that conjunct for you? Well, I don't call it easy, you know. I just uh, train uh, very hard at Team Golden Glory, Martin De Jong. They helped me prepare, you know, at the best level. So I train with the best. That's why I'm not afraid in the ring. You know, I know Allah is with me, so they can do everything what they want. So bring them on. I want to fight for the belt here in Bama. I love the English fans. I love them. Ali Thompson, thank you for the, for the fight. Uh, yeah, it was short, so what can I say? Do you want to see him fight for the title next time out, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> when did you know that he was out in, that, in the guillotine choke? Once you landed it in, you held it until, the, until Mark stopped the fight. But did you know he was out long before that, or did it take Mark to kind of make it realize that, that he was out? Well, I saw him bending with his head downwards, so I thought I would give a flying knee. And uh, as soon as that connected, it was right on his chin. I didn't really hit him with uh, some fist. I just pushed him, and he fell down. I had the guillotine, and I felt his body uh, go out. So yeah, guillotine was on, 100%. It was a tough move, great position, and a really tough, strong guy. You did a great job. Thanks so much for being the main event tonight, because I was super impressed by it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kazin Salimi.